Rachel Stovall is a columnist for the Colorado Springs Gazette. She wrote a little something that got everyone's attention. Rachel, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. <laughs> Glad to be here. All right. E explain the exchange you had that led uh, to this column. So I read about an op-ed that Hal Bidlack did in um, the Colorado, Colorado, Spring. Politi Colorado Politics.com. Right. And this is, this is a, a, a Colorado Springs guy, ran for Congress, I believe. Mm -hmm. All right. And what did he say? Well, he was making an argument for gun control, and hey, we've all heard that before. But as he wrapped up his his argument, he said, you know, and for those of you who, you know, don't want gun control, you know, what if there were 25 black men running around in your neighborhood with, you know, strapped with AR-15s? And I read it, and I had a minute of complete shock. Why? I mean, I understand the race baiting he's doing, which was, you racist white guys, yeah, you like your ARs just mm -hmm. fine, but, you know, if the black man had those guns, well, then you'd be you'd be pro-gun control, just like I am. And it's just, it was ridiculous on a number of fronts. Be, be more specific. What The what language was, was such hyperbole. How many times have any of us seen 25 men with guns outside of the gun range? Just ridiculous. Oh, I, I go to a lot of fun parties. No, I see it all the time. <laughs> what kind of parties are you going to? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a drinking game with the ARs. So I'll invite you to the next one. Don't worry. Oh, no. Well, for the rest of us who don't have such wild parties, it'd be a pretty, you know, unrealistic thing to see. And so I felt like that that hyperbole pushed the rhetoric of the question in, into being just really something that wasn't good. I was so perplexed with the statement. At first I thought, this is racist. And then I thought deeper and said, no, I don't think that this is racist. Everything else about the op-ed was really about the gun control itself. And he really seemed like he was kind of trying to highlight something about the bad attitudes that we have in a cross-cultural context about guns. So. I knew it had to be something else. So I had a conversation with the man who immediately apologized profusely and said he didn't realize that it would be offensive to anybody black. By the way, he um, kind of managed to insult multiple groups. In the same <laughs> so he insulted Hispanics with the same example and Muslims as well. And there are quite a few statewide leaders who are pretty, pretty doggone ticked about it. But we had a conversation and started trying to kind of figure that thing out. I thought there was a more respectful way for him to talk about a culture that he's not in. Well, so I, I know all about being disrespectful. I've, I've uh, somehow made a living on it, but um, it, it brings up this, something that I think the left does a lot, which mm -hmm. is this identity politics of, we're gonna put you in a box, we're gonna put you over here, put you in a box, put you over here. Um, and it always gets me wondering, particularly on Second Amendment issues, those, those boxes that people put folks in. Mm -hmm. for, the, for the love of God, I do not understand <coughs> how Jewish people are anti-gun, any of them, mm -hmm. after seeing what happens to their people when they were disarmed. I, I, it makes no sense to me. The first gun control laws were to get guns away from emancipated slaves. Absolutely true. And so it is kind of crazy that that would be the messaging that would be coming from, by and large, the left, that it's just, you know, this, you know, this awful sort of thing, being able to have guns and people not being able to protect themselves. But fortunately, the black communities always had um, a relationship with guns that just didn't fit that narrative. Up until tell, the 60s, tell most me, of our households had guns. S tell me more about that. Up to the 60s, most of our households had guns. Mm -hmm. Why did most of your households have guns? <sighs> Many a black man has defended his civil rights by asserting his Second Amendment rights. And that was simply the way life was, you know, through <laughs> the century up until the 70s, really. It is, it is the equalizer. What, what changed? And this is, you know, I, I've always thought, you know, if, if, we could, if we could disarm, disarm the white man, disarm the black man, you know what? The man is still going to have guns. Right. You know, so right. uh, I don't know why anyone who, who, who is concerned about African Americans want to just let white cops have, have the guns. Or, I mean, it, 
I, I don't understand it. What changed? I know what happened. It, it is the way that the narrative was formed. So up to that point, having guns was, it was fine. There was no stigma. No one was worried about it. In the 70s, all of the media narratives, mostly from the left, began creating this picture of black men as criminals with guns. Well, the community didn't want that. So a lot of people in the community gave up their guns in an attempt to appear even more law-abiding than they actually were. You blaming all of this on Shaft? Is that what I'm hearing? No, Shaft didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a film, and they did a remake. So apparently, oh, okay. so apparently people like that one. No, no. What, what do you mean? Because news I, narratives. I, I remember the news narratives. I was a kid mm -hmm. in the '70s, and I remember a lot of the media there. I remember a, that every cop show, you know, the bad guy was often black, mm -hmm. not all the time, but you know, and he had a gun. Mm -hmm. You're saying that in African American culture that they said, well. We want to distance ourselves from that? We want to distance ourselves from that. It wasn't just movies. But wasn't, the, but that, wasn't that also the time of, of Black Power and Black Panthers and, and that those, those folks, were, I would think, be going the other direction? They wanted to go the other direction, but the laws began to change. First with the famous Mulford Law in California, then Lyndon Johnson signed an overall gun act in 1968 that really did push taking the guns away. So my community kind of voluntarily began backing up from it. But the narratives I'm telling you about are news narratives. 80% of the time in liberal or mainstream media, black people are portrayed as negative. And those negative stereotypes include being pictured as criminal, and impoverished. By the way, neither are true. The mainstream of black Americans are law-abiding um, and middle class. But also you're telling me now more and more of them are disarming or were disarming. Do you more think that, is that and more. Changing? So we, we had an entire period where people disarmed because they didn't want to be seen as not being law-abiding. But in recent years, there's been a swing back towards people being okay with packing. Pew Research did... Packing your junk. Concealed yeah. carry. Yeah, concealed carry. And Pew Research did a survey and found out that 54% of African Americans actually favor being able to carry, which is really interesting. Wow. Mm -hmm. Which is really interesting and increasing because there's new worry about hate crimes and urban center crime. You know, it's, it's interesting here in Colorado mm -hmm. that 9%, matter of fact, it was complete, uh, or, or Colorado Politics, I think they reported it, 9% of all Colorado adults now have a concealed carry permit. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not just some freak, it is, wait, you have one? Mm -hmm. Well, you're pretty reasonable in everything else. I right. don't know why you lost your mind on this. And from what I understand, the numbers on women carrying now or getting those permits are skyrocketing. Oh, yeah. It's the fastest growing group. And among women in general as a fast growing group, black women are the fastest growing group. Really? Yes. Very concerned about protecting themselves, their kids, and, you know, just being able to, so this, is, when you to say cover things in their lives. It's a worry about, it's a worry about hate crimes. Mm -hmm. it, and I... I I, I know the pressures that are, are being pushed right now. I know the narrative that's being pushed. Yeah. yeah so, so you're telling me African Americans are more concerned, more African Americans are carrying guns. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're going to get back to the point where blacks were before the 70s when you said most families had a gun? I think that we could. Right now we're at 32%. So one third of our community has a gun in the home for protection. And they're thinking about, you know, practical things, their children their home, their possessions. And those are smart things to think about. And I think that those numbers will increase until things look a little calmer or, you know, really maybe never. I mean, because having guns was our norm, especially here in Colorado. I mean, this right. is the state of the black cowboys right. and the buffalo soldiers. Nobody viewed being of color and having a weapon as something scary which is what so upset me, you know, when I first saw... That a black, a black yeah. man with a gun is a scary yeah. thing. No, a black man with a gun isn't a scary thing. And it's kind of neat that, that within communities people are getting an idea that, you know, a black man with a gun is not only not a scary thing, it is a more normalized thing, and it is an okay thing, 54%.
where does it go? We've only got a minute here, but um, <coughs> does does this does this continue? Do you think that this is going to scare white people into supporting gun laws to, to disarm blacks again? If they're smart, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, sadly, that, that's a big if. I know. It's kind of why we have to stop the stereotyping. If we can de derail this narrative and detach this narrative and get that the average black person with a gun is law abiding and you know not you know out to do anything crazy then it will look just the same as anyone else who has a gun and then we can get back to settling the matter of criminals who need to be taken off the street rachel thank you so much you want to read that it's at uh, gazette.com that's where you can find it look for me in the denver post listen to me on k how radio tell a friend about the independence institute just go to thinkfreedom.org just thinkfreedom.org it's a good thing to do all the time We'll see you next week.